Hey guys, what's going on? Well, I wanted to share a video that I just uploaded on my other YouTube channel a little while ago. As you know, I've got two YouTube channels. Of course, the one you're watching right now is the one that I have primarily for DJs, uh, you know, to mentor other DJs and share ideas and things like that. But I've also got another YouTube channel that I have just for clients. And um, I've started doing something new. I thought about this. And we're doing something new called Tuesday Questions, where basically what I do is I make a video and I just answer questions that I've received uh, throughout the week from uh, brides or clients or anybody else asking about the, about my services. So anyway, I wanted to go ahead and upload the uh, first episode right here on my main YouTube channel so that you guys could check it out. And, uh, you know, it's a good idea. And like I said, I've, got, I've received a lot of emails this past week from a different bride, you know, because this is the booking season. And um, I just thought this might be a way to kind of reach out to them. So anyway, I'm going to start doing this every Tuesday, and I'll start uh, uploading those videos here as well so that uh, you can uh, check those out. So anyway, check out the first episode of uh, uh, Tuesday Questions. And I'm going to be doing some vlogs this week for you guys as well. So I haven't forgotten about you. And I know it's been a while since I've done a vlog, but we'll have one to post it uh, by later on this week. So until next time, practice and enjoy. Hi, I'm Stacy Knowles, Entertainment Director for SNDJ Entertainment in Pensacola, and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch the very first episode of what we call SNDJ Entertainment's Tuesday Questions. And also, welcome to the Oval Office. This is where it all happens. This is the nucleus of SNDJ Entertainment, and this is where I spend a lot of time uh, working on uh, wedding planners and uh, basically planning out the whole business. So this is all where it all happens right here. Now, what this program is all about is uh, for the foreseeable near future on Tuesdays, I'm going to be going through my email and answering questions that I get from clients, and maybe it might be a bride or possibly you know a client who's looking for uh, you know a DJ for their party or charitable event or something like that. Uh, you know, feel free to drop me an email, and I'll be glad to email you back with your answer, and I'll also answer it right here on the video as well because I know others may have the same question, and so that's why we're going to start to doing this on Tuesdays, and we may even start doing it as a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live program if we get enough demand for it. But right now we're going to go ahead and record it today and uh, post it. And uh, again, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to drop me an email. My email address is right there on the screen. And uh, like I said, uh, even though that we're going to be talking a lot about weddings today, most of the questions that I've got uh, have to do with weddings because we are in the main wedding booking season right now where a lot of couples have gotten engaged. Uh, if you are planning a school dance or a party or a charitable event, or if you just have a question about our DJ service in general, please feel free to drop me an email and I'll uh, definitely return your email and we'll also answer your questions in a future video as well. So feel free to do that, okay? Now let's get started. Got an email from Michaela, and she wanted to know, do we do beach weddings? And that's a very common question, Michaela. We get that all the time. And, of course, living along uh, the Gulf Coast uh, here in northwest Florida, beach weddings are very popular with a lot of brides. And uh, the answer to that is, uh, yes, we do beach weddings. However, we do have some restrictions that we have to impose uh, simply because of uh, insurance regulations. And uh, the restrictions are is that we have to be able to set up on a hard surface like a, a walkway or you know like maybe a, a paved area or something like that the like maybe right there at the edge of the beach. We just can't take our equipment out on the beach and set up in the sand. So as long as we can set up on, on a, a paved area like that or a flat surface like that, we can uh, definitely do that. Also, we would need to have some kind of shelter from the uh, elements uh, like the sunshine or something like that, like maybe a tent or something like that to uh, put our equipment under and uh, we can definitely do that. Or like let's say you're having your wedding at a beach house, which is really popular. You know, a lot of those houses are on stilts. We can actually set up our equipment underneath the beach house and uh, you know project our speakers out to the beach where you're getting married and to do that as well. So we do have uh, you know various uh, ways that we can do beach weddings. So just to uh, give us a call or just uh, send us an email and uh, maybe we could do a site visit and we could talk about your particular options there. But the short answer is yes, we do beach weddings and uh, we can definitely help you out with that. Whitney wants to know, why do you not charge an hourly rate like other vendors? Okay, so you're wondering what that's all about. Well, a couple years ago, just like... Um, uh, other vendors like uh, other DJ services in the area, we actually used to uh, charge an hourly rate for our packages. You know, like we had like a four-hour package, I think like a six-hour package and, you know, things like that. 
And uh, the reason I stopped doing that a couple years ago was, was I felt like it was really misleading when brides and grooms would look at our packages, and I'm just going to throw a number out there, okay? I'm just going to say, you know, let's, let's say we had a package for like $7.99 and it said four hours. Well, a bride and groom would look at that and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, he's charging me $800 for, uh, you know, just four hours worth of work. And it was really misleading. When in reality, we do a lot more than just that four hours worth of work there uh, that you see at, at the reception. When you look at a, at a professional DJ service at uh, your wedding reception, that's actually the finished product after many, many hours of planning and preparation have gone into it. And in reality, we actually spend anywhere between 15 and uh, 30 hours uh, on one wedding, starting from the first uh, communication all the way through until we load the last piece of equipment in our vehicle at, at, at the end of the night, at the end of the wedding. So I thought, you know, when you look at that, you know, when we say we had like four performance hours or something like that, you know, people would automatically look at that and say, wait a minute, he's charging eight hours just for four hours worth of work, when in reality we do a lot more than what you see at, at, within those four hours at your actual wedding reception. So I really thought that was kind of misleading, so I decided to go ahead and start charging a, a flat rate for all of our packages. And basically the way that that works is you can have your DJ all the way up till midnight. Uh, on your wedding day, so uh, you know we don't have an hourly limit. You can have us all the way up to midnight. You wouldn't pay an, an hourly rate unless we went after midnight, which would be into the next day. But another aspect I thought about with that is uh, I never book more than uh, two uh, events per day anyway. So you know it just makes sense. I mean, you know, if you hire me uh, for your wedding, you got me the whole day anyway. So you know why charge like a, an hourly limit or something like that when it comes to that? So that's why I started doing that. And ever since I started doing that, I've actually gotten a lot of comments about that. And last year we even expanded and started doing the same thing with uh, parties and school dances and other events too. So now with all of our packages, all of our events, not just weddings, we actually just charge a flat rate and you can have your DJ all the way up to midnight. Um, so that's uh, that's how that works. So it's uh, like I said, it's become really popular and I've had a lot of brides and grooms tell me that they're really happy with that. And a lot of times, you know, the brides and grooms may not actually use me all the way up to midnight, but let's say that their wedding's supposed to end at like 10 or 11 at night, and let's say everybody's uh, having fun and, uh, you know, they want uh, just to continue the party. Well, the good thing about that is, technically, you still got me till midnight, so if you wanted me to stay an extra hour or whatever, it's not going to cost you any more if you want to keep the party going for a little while longer. So that's another added bonus on that, too, and that's why I started doing that, and that does happen quite often. So, uh, yeah, that's why we do that. And uh, like I said, it's become real popular and a lot of brides really uh, like the fact that we don't charge an hourly rate and we just uh, charge a flat rate for each one of our packages. Now, Tom asks, how much is uh, my retainer fee to reserve my date? And a very good question, Tom. With all of our packages, the retainer fee to reserve your date, that's your reservation fee or your non-refundable deposit, as we call it, uh, is a one-third of your total package. So uh, one-third of, of whatever you're going to be uh, paying for your total package is, uh, is your retainer fee. And then usually the way it works is that your uh, remaining balance isn't due until a week before your event. And, uh, you know, I've had some uh, brides and grooms and some other clients say, well, can we make, uh, you know, just monthly payments, you know, leading up to the wedding? And, uh, yeah, we can do that. We'll work out whatever you want to do as long as we've got the final balance paid and everything paid up at least a week in advance uh, before your wedding. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. We'll work out to whatever arrangements you want to do. But, yeah, a third of, um, of your total cost is what your retainer fee would be to reserve your date. Sherry asks, how much... Uh, time does it normally take for you to set up and break down? And a uh, very good question, Sherry. That really depends on the package. Uh, usually, I would say on average, it's probably going to take around two hours for us to set up. And like I said, that's really going to depend on the package. I mean, if I've got a, a wedding that I'm having to set up two sound systems, let's say that the bride and groom's chosen an uplighting package, we're going to have to do a lot of uplighting around the room and, you know, setting up two sound systems, like let's say for the ceremony and the reception, then it probably could take up to three hours to set up. You know, it, it just really depends on the package. But like I said, probably two hours at least is what we normally take. And, um, you know, when you look at our videos and you look at our pictures, it looks like it would be a, just real easy to set up, but there's really a lot of wires and a lot of uh, things that we have to set up. I'm going to have to do a, a video tutorial on that and show you that. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of hooking up we have to do, and it does take a while. So, yeah, usually anywhere between two and three hours is uh, how long we normally take to uh, set up at a particular event. You know, just like I said, it just depends on the package. Now, as far as breakdown goes, again, that also depends on the package and, you know, things of the, uh, like that. We have to, um, you know, break everything down, pack everything up, and load it out. So I would say anywhere between, I'm going to say 60 and 90 minutes, you know, on average. I mean, sometimes it can take maybe as low uh, or little as 45 minutes to uh, break down. But like I said, it really just depends on our setup and breakdown location. Now, let's say, you know, we've got a long transport. Like, uh, for instance, let's say we're, we're going to a hotel. We have to go, you know, like we have to start out in a parking garage, ride an elevator up several floors, get out a hallway, you know, and stuff like that. You know, that's also got to factor into it, too, into the uh, time that it takes. But, yeah, I would say roughly about at least two hours to set up. And 
in uh, probably anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half to a breakdown at the end of the night. Just again, depending on how much equipment we have to have, what package the bride and groom of the client has um, has chosen. And Jennifer asks, do you provide services for the ceremony and will that require a second sound system? And uh, yes, that goes back to our last question. Uh, yes, we do provide services for wedding ceremonies. We can provide music and sound for your ceremony. We also have a microphone that uh, we can, uh, you know, your officiant can use if they want to use that. But uh, it, again, it would really depend on your location if we would need a second sound system or not. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're having your reception ceremony all in the same room, then no, we wouldn't need a second sound system for that. But let's say you're having your uh, uh, ceremony and reception at the same venue, but however, you know, like your ceremony is being held outside and maybe your reception's in a, a banquet room there, like a hotel or something like that, then yes, we would need a second sound system. And we do have packages where the second sound system is, is actually included. We do have a smaller sound system that we can set up just for the ceremony. We'll come set it up, do your ceremony, and you break it back down, and you know, that's usually how that works. So uh, yeah, we can definitely do that. But uh, we do provide services for your ceremony, absolutely. And you can look at our packages just by going to our website, sndjpensacola.com. I'll put the uh, uh, listing right there on the screen so you can uh, check that out. Okay, Tanya asks, is it normal for wedding vendors to ask for full payment before wedding day? And that's a very good question, Tanya. Yes, it is. A lot of vendors will ask for full payment before a wedding day. Like, for instance, SNDG Entertainment, we ask for the full payment to be paid at least a week in advance. And the main reason for that is because we don't want our brides and grooms having to worry about money on their wedding day. We want you to be squared away and everything paid up and all that good stuff on wedding day so that all you have to do is concentrate on getting married and having fun. So that's one of the main reasons to do that. But yeah, a lot of wedding vendors will require the um, you know the the uh, full payment uh, before they actually show up at the venue. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's definitely normal. A lot like I said, a lot of them will do that. Dana asked, I read on your website that you do reception planning. Can you explain the whole planning process and what do you do besides playing music? Well, that's a very good question, Dana. A lot of people have wondered about that and what does all does that mean? Uh, when we say that we serve as your reception entertainment planner and director and um, you know all that. First of all, let me say that it's a common misconception that the professional wedding DJs will simply just handle music. You know, they think that we just come and we'll just set up our equipment for, you know, like uh, three or four hours or whatever, play music, break down, and then leave, and maybe make an announcement here or there or something like that. But nothing could be farther from the truth. With SNDG Entertainment, like I said, we actually serve as your reception entertainment planner and director. And what that means is, is that uh, I will send you a copy of our reception planning guide once you decide that you're going to go ahead and, and go with us. And uh, we send you the uh, two forms. If uh, One of them is for the reception, one of them is for the ceremony, if we're doing your ceremony. And basically, you fill out that information. And we work together to fill it out and to make sure that um, you know everything's how you like it. It's got information on there about your music, all the events you'd like to have. And then what I'll do at that point is I'll go ahead and type everything up on a nice, organized planner for you and uh, send that out to all your other vendors once you've looked it over and approved it so that everybody's got a copy of what happens and they're going to know when we're going to do things and things like that so we make it real organized for you and uh, yeah we do handle that, uh, that that aspect for you now we serve as your reception entertainment director at your wedding by basically making sure everything uh, runs smoothly for example i'm in charge of uh, making sure that the wedding party's lined up i'll meet with the wedding party pr uh, personally uh, before they get announced to let them know what to do you know usually it's to go to the dance floor but we always make sure that they know what they're going to do when we're going to do it and uh, during the reception i'm always checking with my bride and groom to make sure that they're ready before I announce any major events on the microphone. For example, let's say you know it's getting close to uh, you know the end of dinner, and you know maybe you got your toast and your cake cutting coming up. I'll go to our bride and groom and I'll say, "Hey, bride and groom, you know it looks like most people finished eating. Do you want to do your toast and your cake cutting in about ten minutes?" And in that way, the bride can go run to the bathroom if she needs to, or you know, whatever the situation may be. But then I'll also go check with your other vendors too, especially your photographer, and let them know, say, hey, okay, I'm giving you a heads up. We're going to be doing our toast and our cake cutting in about 10 minutes. And that way, if the photographer has to uh, switch out a battery or, you know, change out a disc or something like that, you know, they got time to do that as well. And then at the end of those 10 minutes, I would check back with you just to double check and make sure that you're ready and also your photographer's ready. Because the last thing I'd want to do is get on the microphone and announce, uh, you know, something and find out that the bride's in the bathroom or something like that. So that's one of the rules that we have. We serve as your director by making sure that we don't announce anything unless we've double checked and made sure that uh, you're ready. So yeah, that's how we serve as your director. That just means basically that we're just in charge of making sure everything runs smoothly. And that's one thing that uh, brides and grooms really do like about us because not a lot of other DJ services offer that, uh, the planning and preparation. And we've had a lot of uh, brides tell us that we actually relieve them of a lot of stress when it comes to their wedding. So yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the things that we do there. 
Okay, and that's going to go ahead and wrap up this uh, first edition of SNDJ Entertainment's Tuesday Questions. And I want to thank all the folks who have emailed me and asked me questions. And uh, next week, if you have a question, if you'd like me to answer here on the video, just uh, drop me an email. Again, my email address is right there on the screen. And, and again, it's not just for weddings. It's for other events, too. If you have a question about school dances, parties, or uh, charitable events, or something like that, or just our, our service in general, please feel free to uh, give me a call or send me an email, and I'll be glad to address that. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see See you next week on SNDJ Entertainment's Tuesday Questions.